we will be. Thanks for your support. Thanks for listening. Um, today, we're going to be doing crypto news, and then also we'll be um, looking at our crypto map that we finished. So let me do a little teaser on the crypto map. Um, I do have some news today for us as well, but I've, I've renamed the title of our map to the world's number one crypto map because I do think we may have the greatest crypto map in the world. I'm not even sharing my screen. Apologies. Let me just switch that over. Boom. There we are. This is, in my opinion, the greatest crypto map in the world. And that's why we're called the document that. I made it all pretty yesterday. Um, and I worked with the, with actually this isn't even the full version. I worked with the community yesterday on the live stream. We mapped it all out together. Where's my full version? And then I made it all pretty yesterday. Um, and let me pull it up here. So I'll give you a little teaser right now. We're gonna go through the, through news first. Um, and then maybe we will deep dive into the map. Can't even zoom out. Hmm. Well, you can see a detailed version of the map, but we'll make sure we can zoom out on this. Um, but yeah, the map is coming along really, really nicely. It looks good. Uh, we've even got a legend. We've got crypto resources, developer tools, marketplaces, uh, Polkadot and Binance ecosystems, and then we've got our OSI model as well. So we'll be having a look at that later. But quickly, let's get into news and what's going on with cryptocurrencies today. Uh, Bitcoin's sitting at just below 18,000, like it has been for a while, um, excuse me, the last couple of days. Ethereum still hasn't uh, pushed through 500. We're sitting at 474. Um, if you haven't, don't follow this Satoshi Nakamoto bot. I feel like this is a fun little follow on Twitter. Um, I think he just p- produces Satoshi Nakamoto quotes from the forums from early days back in 2009, 10, 11, 12, before he disappeared. He, he or she. Um, Chainlink has been successfully deployed live on the Matic network as our recommended Oracle solution. So anybody doubting the Matic network, um, they're kind of launching live Chainlink price Oracle feeds. It's not really loading, but you can you can see the words here. So they have five price feeds. Oh, let me go. We'll we'll go down to that. But um, looks like Matic Network now has five chain uh, five chain link feeds for different um, price feeds. So Matic is still building. People continue to ask me about blockchains um, outside of Ethereum and what other Ethereum killers are are going to be viable. Um, and it does look like Matic Network continues to build. I didn't really see any themes this morning. Um, really, the talk of the last couple of days has been Bitcoin. And let's open up DeFi. Um, actually, our market cap of crypto is at 511. Amazing. The crypto market cap continues to increase. I know Bitcoin was up about 0.6% yesterday, but it looks like the crypto market cap, um, if we take about 20 million on 500, yeah, okay, so the, the total crypto market got pretty much increased by Bitcoin uh, yesterday, uh, by the increase in Bitcoin, excuse me. And we had a few other coins shoot up as well. Looks like Litecoin performed well in the last 24 hours. Let me scroll down a bit. And then we'll jump into some news here um, in just a second. I don't trust Vite at all, V-I-T-A-E. Um, let's see who our best performer the last 24 hours was, then we'll jump into some news. Looks like sushi. Sushi swaps continue to perform well this whole week, up 125%, up 40% just this last day. Wire and finance up 25%. Um, so it looks like DeFi's had a really good last 24 hours. Looks like looks like a lot of the coins are up, which is great. Cool. So let's run through the news articles that I've got kind of highlighted for us, um, and then we can chat about anything you want to today as well. Any news stories? Um, probably the biggest news story actually. Um, was the release of this slingshot. Let me pull it up. Let me go through my news first, um, and then we'll, then we'll pull up this new organization, I believe called Slingshot. Looks like um, someone spied some uh, Solidity language in one of Ariana Grande's videos, which is, in- which is interesting. Just goes to show the increased use of Solidity code as a viable language. Let's actually give them a follow. Someone found a Golang bug.
So this is the Week in ETH news, Week in ETH news um, Twitter account. And they actually look like they get some very detailed um, stories here. A Mac sent unencrypted to Apple, all programs you run and your IP. So check out Week in ETH news. Looks like they have um, some pretty detailed news related to Ethereum. I've already kind of highlighted this website as a Web 3.0 business. Uh, we love cryptocurrencies and altcoins. We also love Web 3.0 business here. Um, Saintfame.com forward slash fame. This is what I see the future of retail commerce going to. A MetaMask connected wallet um, where it's easy to buy and sell physical goods just like cryptocurrencies. Um, let me know if you think otherwise. Obviously, this t-shirt's a bit expensive at 11000 but they did put it on a bonding curve. So obviously, not all physical items need to be put on a bonding curve. I have been looking into um, creating and deploying your own ERC-20 token, and I actually did that the other day. Um, and I was able, through this person's Juan Cruz Martinez's uh, Medium tutorial, I was able to create an ERC-20 token. Hey, good morning, Squanchy. I saw Morty was trending on Twitter today, and I hope it was related to Rick and Morty, and I, I didn't have time to look. So I actually created the map token the other day. Um, and if you're looking at Etherscan, you can actually see in the bottom right-hand corner, um, I created that token. So that's pretty cool. Thought I'd just highlight that. Um, looking at Uniswap, kind of the big story, actually probably the biggest story of our week was that Uniswap um, liquidity provider rewards ended on Tuesday, Tuesday, November 17th. And everyone was wondering what's going to happen to the price of Uni. Let's have a quick look and see what actually happened. Then everyone also was asking what's going to happen to the liquidity people are putting onto Uniswap. Will people take out, um, thank you, Squanchy, small steps. We're just taking small steps here um, every day. And now everyone was wondering, are there people going to pull their liquidity from Uniswap because they're no longer getting compensated? And the, and the answer is bullish. And the answer is yes. Um, you can see here on the right hand, left hand side of my screen, um, we have the total liquidity for the Uniswap organization. We were at about 3.4 billion nearly. Now we're down to 1.5 billion. So that was probably the biggest story of the week outside of Bitcoin hitting 18,000. Looks like the Uniswap price hasn't been impacted too much. So liquidity down, price up. It looks like if you bought Uniswap last week, it was a really bad time to buy. Looks like if you buy Uniswap this week, much better time to buy. Liquidity's down, price is up. Um, it's a bit counterintuitive actually, because I just said price is up, but I think you understand my point. So Uniswap's still firing. Um, someone in the Discord today asked about DEXs and the um, kind of what is the, the valuation proposition of DEXs, and it's a good question. Um, in 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 my eyes, it's the it's the closest tied to a direct line um, to free cash flows. So traditional financial businesses are valued on their free cash flows, and then the market's opinion on what the future free free cash flows are going to be. Um, so similarly, we can do the same thing in, DeFi, in crypto. We care less about cash flows in, in DeFi or in crypto, but we don't really have an alternative yet in terms of, you say, crypto flows. Well, yield farming is per, per, per giving us crypto flows that we can turn into whatever we want. Um, so I like DEXs because we have a direct line to crafts cash flow or crypto flow positive where trading volume times take fee or trading fee equals revenue. Um, so... I don't see Uniswap volume going down in the f too much in the future. Um, so then it's really about when do we get in um, into that investment. Here is a flash loan. If no one's ever seen a flash loan attack, this is what it looks like on Etherscan when somebody's going to go in here and be like, great, let's figure out what happened. Um, you can see the success of the contract at the time. It was two days ago. This flash loan was related to OUSD or Origin USD. Let's see if they've recovered actually. Oof. So I believe Origin Dollar, which is sitting at 15 cents, is supposed to sit at $1, it's supposed to be a stable coin. And unfortunately, our flash loan attacker has completely ripped out um, pretty much all volume. Yep. Pretty much destroyed origin origin dollar um so what they did if you look at our flash loan attack they borrowed 70 eth you can see all the transaction items um very hard to read in my 
clearly. You can see it's hard to read. I think there are a few readers out there um, to turn Etherscan transactions into a more of a linear uh, transaction flow. I'll look that up for us because there are certain transactions when they occur on your prof on on your the platform that you like or or a trade that is similar to you. You want to understand it and. Ether scans a little tough, but at the end of the day, they borrowed seventy thousand ether, they repaid seventy thousand ether, and then they banked about, I think it was like seventy nine thousand ether, and they they profited about nine thousand ether, all within one transaction. This is how complex it gets. Yo, morning, Echo Meander, happy Thursday. And the big thing to note here is right in the middle, is we swap three hundred oh three hundred thousand OUSD. Um, so that's where people found the OUSD in there, and that was kind of the missing link of, I trust all these other organizations from DYDX to Uniswap to Compound to Aave. The only missing link here is OUSD. So it looks like they targeted OUSD, and they were successful because or USD is no longer a stable coin. So this was an interesting one. This is um, for anybody. I, I do think that um, kind of forensic crypto accounting will be something in the future um, that's kind of a viable business. So maybe we start keeping track of these. Mm. Here's a good alt list that I wanted to share because I know we love altcoins here. Um, and there's a few on here I don't have on my crypto map. So let me just take note of these because I'll add these later. But we got Waves, uh, SNTVT, Tom Tomo I don't have on there, SNTVT. Got waves, Tomo, got algo. I need easy file on there. UNN, I don't even, is anyone, let's see what UNN is. I'm not actually quite sure what UNN is. BNB link, TVK, I don't know about. UTK, the payment processor we know about. Um, Uniswap, ETH, XRP, RSR, and injection. So this is Lenny, Trader Lenny. Thank you, Trader Lenny. This is his current non Deegan alts watch list. Highly skeptical of waves, but that's just me being a bear. The rest of them look pretty good to me. So Echo Meander, you've been watching SNTVT. I've had a look. It, it looks interesting. It really does. Anything I'm missing. These actually threads, if you're willing to do the research and you really like altcoin kind of research and deep diving. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I agree, Echo Meander. I don't think waves is doing much. So. But if you're into altcoin research, whenever you see one of these threads and they've got like Trader Lenny, if they've got a lot of followers, 26,000, so a decent amount, um, head into their head into their comments and you could see some gems in here. Like someone's talking about OpenDAO product, OpenDAO protocol. Bringing world world assets to DeFi, that could be interesting. Yeah, Commander, you said you heard. Oh, I gotta find um, that new Slingshot website. Where's Squanchy? Squanchy, that um, Slingshot website, OctoFi, currently sitting at number three sixty four. Let me go back to home and see if I can find that Slingshot website. Octofi here at $32, um, got $10 million market cap versus or versus like 20 to 25 fully diluted. Uh, we're up from $6 at our all-time low. So you, Ecomanda, you heard they're holding Octo. Well, those holding Octo will give ETH for holders in Q1 2020. One. That's interesting. Oof, we don't want to buy at the top for Octo, so maybe we earn our Octo rather than we buy our Octo. Let's go and see Octo.fi, and let's go to Robert Leshner, who's the founder of Compound. Invest in DeFi from a platform you own. Start here if you're new. This is interesting. I did see Octo.fi probably around three or four months ago. Oh, this is really cool. Um, see how we've got like a just, just an instant little chatbot down here? And then I can sign in with my Telegram. That's pretty cool, a little Telegram chat. I haven't seen that before. These are the little things. You can't actually see it because my little face is in the way. But right where my face is, there's this little chat feature down the bottom. These are the little features that you can tell devs know what they're doing. 
you can tell devs are decent because that's something I've never seen before. Um, and for when we're looking at venture back companies or com companies, early stage, high growth, venture backable companies, we want to see them actually very good at decent at code, you know? So that's new. Haven't seen that before. So they're aggregating thousands of opportunities, open source, community first, VC free. I love it. And here is Slingshot, which we're going to check out in just a second. Oh, yeah. Oops, it turns out that the video doesn't mention what it is. I got so excited by the teaser that I just had to share it. So what is Slingshot? I have a feeling they're going to be, um, it's, it's a project related to launching tokens. It's in their white paper. Interesting. So maybe now's a good time to get into Octo. And it kind of looks like there's always that phrase in traditional finance or just in investing in general. Has something been priced in to the token price? Sorry about this visual. This visual is aggressive. But I wanted to show you Slingshot Crypto. Um, it's in beta, brand new. Um, but it looks like they're signing up for the launch alert now at slingshot.finance. So keep an eye out for this. Not quite sure exactly what's going on. So have a look at Slingshot Crypto Twitter account. Frederick will have a look at Index next. Um, so Echomand, it's kind of looking like if we were to say something's priced in, it could be priced in already, given that we've had a massive increase here. Um, hard to say. It's really tough to say what is priced in or what's not priced in. So I'm not the biggest fan of that saying. But um, it seems like if the information is known that ETH 2.0 or excuse me, ETH rewards are coming in Q1 2021. Um, the price isn't going to wait for that, obviously. Have a look at Index Cooperative or Index Coop. Love the name. Love the little owl. What else is going? I've only got, I've got a few more um, organizations to look at, a few more news stories. But let's keep chatting. Any coins that you want. This is a really, really good buy. I feel like for... DeFi indices, it's just a smart play. You've got DPI, you've DEX. Let's look at my crypto map and see what else we have. I want to see this little crypto map might be just a wonderful resource for us uh, kind of moving forward. If we head over to our DeFi indices, what I've got so far um, is DeFi Pulse DPI. I've got Index Coop, the index token. And then I've also got the uh, power pool governance token as well. One that I should add in there is set tokens. If you want to buy set tokens, I think DPI is on set tokens. Now let's have a look at index coop a little closer. Hey, Echo Mandy. Yes, I do have a Twitter. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's um it's Mr. Cartographer underscore. So there's an underscore at the end. It's I think in the video description and it's also I think it's in the video description. Yeah, I will certainly recommend. I'll, I'll give you my Twitter. Um, so let's have a look at Index Coop. ETH is the most trusted on Ethereum. If you're an ETH bull, 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 you should check out Sin Sinlev, Synthetics Leverage. I, I, I assume that's what it stands for. Morning Forest. The index coop is currently has 26 million diversified in crypto index products. Awesome. There it is. Oh, I didn't realize um, index coop made DPI. Here we go. They're integrated products and tools. They can earn yield on coop, alpha, homora, moon swap. Interesting. These are actually, this is something to dive into. These are integrated products and solutions. Okay. So they're just, that's fine. Here we go. Okay. So Index Coop's first two products are the Index Pulse, the DPI, and the Index um, INDEX. So whether we're investing in, that's interesting. It seems like Tell me if I'm wrong here. You stake DPI and earn index. Ah, thank you, Squanchy. Um, much appreciated. 
this looks good. The website looks good. We got a three-year token release on index, so earn those indexes if you're holding DPI. Very cool. Um, kind of bullish. And I think it's great for normies as well. Like, why try to beat the market? Why try to buy five to 10 crypto DeFi altcoins and outperform the DPI when you could just purchase the DPI? So for anybody, we're going to have a lot of people joining. Thank you, Ecomanda. Perfect. I'm glad you found it. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of people join our community in 2021. And we'll be telling those people to buy the DPI. Um, and they can have fun with an index while you and I enjoy picking our tokens. If you're, if you, I would go even further and say, if you're a DeFi project, you should go out of your way to support ETH first, then other assets. Preserve some special status for ETH in your project. Strengthening ETH strengthens the ecosystem and strengthening your project. It's a good take from safety third from danger. Um, yeah, it's a good take. Even if you're building on Polkadot or some other blockchain, support Ether, um, support the Ethereum blockchain, be integrated and interoperable. Squanchy, you were one of the first followers on Coop Index and I didn't buy. Well, that's okay, Squanchy, you missed one, but it still shows that you were there um, and that you know your techniques for being early were correct. So you can take some solace in that. I saw value. DeFi protocol that I didn't really want to touch yet until I saw a little bit more about it, um, but they continue to make news. So have a look at value DeFi. It's not really loading. Let's quickly look at the rest of our news stories today. There's a few Polkadot organizations that Ed in our community dropped that I want to chat about. Oh yes, here's UNN. UNN is coming. So we're talking Union Finance, UNN, decent name, decent logo. Let's have a quick look, hopefully this loads. Uh, another organization I wanted to chat about was NOIA. They are the world's first programmable internet backbone as a service. Wanted to see if people had bought this token already, if they were in on it. If not, have a look, impressive website. Um, it's kind of one of those Websites who who did the explanation perfectly. Um, we're pretty much, in my opinion, rebuilding the pipelines of the internet um, through organizations like NYA. You can see the really simple graphic here. The internet is flawed with centralized pipelines for centralized servers, and therefore we want to NOIA bridges the gap and creates a decentralized web of, I guess, computer transaction and information flows. So. This little graphic kind of explains everything to me. Um, and then we could deep, I did dig a little deeper yesterday, public team. Um, but it kind of seems obvious that this is, a, this is a use case that needs to be solved, that if this is a problem of congestion with computer networks, distributed ledger helps. So I thought NOIA was a good play. And I'll go and throw this in the shill channel. And actually, Oh, I'm actually curious, um, Echo Miendo, you're mentioning the Microsoft Azure team. And I think a Microsoft Azure makes it so that you and I can build blockchain technology or organizations can build blockchain technology. I'm just so curious because they're centralized, obviously. And I wonder if we care about that. Let's have a look at some, um, some winners and losers today as well. Um, oh, you... Wow, you've made um, Forest. That's good to know that you made money on Value DeFi. That's they they continue to push out content and have updates. So that's good to know. But check out NOIA. I'm a big fan. I don't own yet, but I want to. Two people have mentioned the. Oh, I wanted to talk about this first. Alex Saunders, give Alex Saunders, um, Alex Saunders AU a follow on Twitter. He runs Nuggets News and also Collective Shift. They have most of their, I think like 90%, actually I do know 90%, Morning Horn Hunter. More, actually, let's look up um, Collective Shift. Most, I think 90% of their um, information is free. So I'm gonna continue to push them as free resources. And actually they've got a paid service that has a lot of really good information. So if you wanna get in depth, um, their paid service is really good as well. We'll have a look at that. But pretty much Alex Saunders was mentioning that he, he his um, favorite pair right now is ETH to BTC. 
So the ETH to BTC pair is continually creating this, what they call a wedge in technical analysis. Um, speak up if you like technical analysis, because I don't know the phrases as well. But as you can see, we've got kind of two wedges here um, where volatility is shrinking. And he's saying that we've had a BTC run. Um, he's expecting ETH to break out as compared to BTC. So for ETH to go on a nice little run. So I had a look. What I was planning on doing today actually was overlaying this. Let's see if we can do it. Let's overlay the ETH BTC chart with um, the BTC USD chart. Someone had a recommendation for me. It would be interesting to overlay BTC to USD with BTC to ETH. We might do that if TradingView um, can load fast enough. Really liking Shading View um, recently. So that's the bullish case for ETH in that we do have this wedge of ETH to BTC that is inching closer. Alex Saunders has been following this closely. He tweets about it a lot. He thinks we're at a generational move here where ETH's going to pump. So get in now. Um, now, two things. Number one, and Echo Mienda, I will get to your question in just a second. Um, um, two things on ETH and BTC. Number one, you should have your, um, let's check out RSR. Pretty much everybody on this call, um, Bitcoin's no longer a buy for us. Hopefully you have your Bitcoin allocation. If you don't, go get it in the next couple of days once it dips. But you and I have our BTC allocation. Um, come Q1 2021, I'm going to say stop buying Ether. I think that it'll be too far past. You and I don't want to buy the tops. So if you're buying BTC today, stop it. Wait for a dip. Um, buy Ether today because we do think it's going to pump in 2021. Let's go and have a look at reserve rights really quickly. So I just want to keep stressing to the people in our community, BTC is no longer a buy for us. Ether is no longer going to be a buy for us in Q1 2021 if we have a nice little pump here. Chainlink, probably no longer a buy for us um, in the future. We're at $13. I don't want you guys buying at 13 billion market cap. Um, you know, I wanted you buying at five and 10. So I'm going to be a voice of reason for you in 2021 around stop buying our largest tokens. If you don't have your allocation, you missed out. Stop being late. Um, so let's check out RSR. Yeah, RSR is pumping. We're up 30% in the last seven days. Who's the best performer of the last 24 hours? Sushi, Wiren. Haven't heard of Bella Protocol. So let me know if my take is like completely off there. I just don't want I just don't want anyone buying the tops here on this channel. We got we only we have a small community so far. Um, we're all deep in crypto. So I'm gonna just continue to reiterate that throughout 2021 is that we're gonna be holding our largest tokens now and in the future, we're gonna don't we don't you worry, there's gonna be plenty of organizations for us to invest in. So another thing about ETH and BTC um, for typically, if we're saying what's the correlation between ETH and BTC, um, BTC traditionally pumps a little bit earlier than Ether and Ether trails, um, it's just slightly. So let me know if you have a different take on that, but that's what I've seen traditionally is that even in like the 2017 run, Bitcoin pumped, Ether pumped a little bit after. So Alex um, Svenek, Svenevic, he had a great point that um, he's not the first to express it, but BTC is more attractive to incumbents because they see there's still room for them as intermediaries. So they can use native BTC or wrap BTC and still, um, you know, still have traditional banks and still have traditional um, trade fi e um, organizations. But now with ETH, ETH is less attractive because literally Ethereum is, is trying to recreate or rebuild the data and transactional pipelines of a centralized internet to turn it into a decentralized internet. Um, so intermediaries in the Ethereum world are removed from the equation altogether, and we have a new reserve currency in Ether. So for obviously, honestly, for TradeFi organizations, BTC is far more attractive because um, it, it kind of works with you. So just two points there. Let me open up this Lenny list here while I have a look at Echo Mienda's um, question. You got a noob question. When you, when you buy coins from central exchanges, do you use USDD, USDT pair or BTC or ETH? 
you usually buy ETH, then convert to USDT and buy coins on SEX. Is that the correct workflow? I recommend I do the same. Um, personally, I still view my transactions in stable coins as my cost basis. So pretty much it's how do you want to track your cost basis Ecomanda, when we're doing taxes next year in April. Um, I want to end this isn't always easy, obviously, but I want to enter my trades in, in stable coins, exit them in stable coins. Um, and if I have to exit back into Ether, I'll usually convert it to stable coins and just pay either that small sex transaction fee um, or even the Uniswap transaction fee that I get my dollars back. Um, and that's pretty much just for tax purposes. You and I, um, our, my big goal personally is to stack Bitcoin, stack Ether, um, live off some cash, you know, small percentage of my portfolio in cash and in real estate. But I'm, my goal is to stack BTC and stack Ether. Um, so I will enter and exit with stable coins still. And I think come 2022, 2023, when in the future, maybe your and I mindset will switch to that we can live our whole life in Ethereum now, or we can live our whole life in BTC um, asset denominations in the future. Then our mindset will switch. So... I think your way of doing it right now, Ecomand is fine. Um, it's all about cost basis and tracking your portfolio in the easiest way. A few different, or hopefully that answered your questions. Um, majors have bad risk reward and less upside than some solid alts. Agreed. Yeah, I agree, Squanchy. Two different organizations that Ed in our community um, kind of put out there. Number one was the Darwinian Project. Both of these are Polkadot-based organizations. Um, this is the Internet of Tokens connected as an open, open cross-chain bridge protocol based on substrate. They focus on the construction of future Internet of Tokens. Every organization that builds on Polkadot seems to be very well put together from a UI UX standpoint. All their websites are beautifully designed. They look really good. They don't look like they're scams or frauds or anything. They've got roadmaps. So wanted to look at Darwinian um, and then also wanted to see if they had, that's the Bella protocol. I don't think they have a token. There it is. Awesome. The ring token, Darwinian network native token. I haven't read too much into this, so this is really just a shill. And I guess that's the definition of a shill, is speaking on a coin when you don't actually know anything about the coin. But that is why we have a research community, is that you know someone gave this tip to me in our community. I trust that person in my community, so let's have a look at it. We've got about 18 million market cap, so about 36 fully diluted market cap. Um, all-time low, we're only about we're about two thousand percent above all-time low. Hopefully, this project's solving um, really complex things because the token's been around since November nineteenth, so it's been around a while, quite a while for for crypto um, timeframes. And we have had some decent growth all the way up to sixteen cents, and now we're sitting at four cents. So you could have a quick four x there just to get back to all-time highs. So I thought this would be an interesting one to take a look at um, as Polkadot continues to grow. We want to be looking where other people aren't looking. Everyone's looking at BTC and ETH right now. Let's continue to hone in on Polkadot and see if we can continue to find some of these gems. The other organization on the Polkadot ecosystem is Fala Network. And this is blockchain conf confidentiality um, by Trusted Computing. So. Cool. Confidential data exchange. Confidential um, data exchange protocol. This is pretty cool. Smart ooh, smart contracts with secrets. Follow Network implements a confidential smart contract with a TEE blockchain hybrid architecture. Something that's interesting is per, uh, per permissionless versus permissioned blockchains, and then also private versus public blockchains. Follow Network here is obviously talking about private or um, either permission blockchains or at least just um, securing yourself and making your data confidential in public blockchains. So you could compare this. It sounds like you could compare this to a tornado cache. And let's see if Fala has a coin. There it is, Fala Network, sweet. I do think the the like the grand vision of your most decentralized, most permissionless, um, most public blockchain 
is a little overrated. Um, people that are fighting for perfect decentrality, uh, perfect decentralization, excuse me, um, I think it's overrated. I think BTC will get us there in terms of a decentralized store of value. So people that want to create this perfect decentralized ecosystem don't know if the world needs it. We need somewhere in the middle of a hybrid. Um, so I'm very bullish on permission blockchains, very bullish on private blockchains that aren't solving global issues, but will solve geographical issues, will solve community or industry issues. I do like this token chart for Fala. Uh, we have a nice pump at the start. And then that was in September. And then since September, crypto hasn't performed very well in 2020. Um, so we've had some down days. So the performance has been relatively understandable with high volumes, volumes above five or six million every day. So Fala Network has some interest. That's an interesting one. It's a nice little shill. Let's go and see if we can um, chart this pair really quickly of BTC to USD versus BTC to ETH. Also wanted to um, promote Collective Shift. Collective Shift, 90% of their information in the Knowledge Center is free. They do have a paid membership as well with, I think they have a research They have a research team. Um, so they, they pump out a lot of content for you around stocks, uh, cryptos, uh, commodities. And here we go. We've got categories of basic basic knowledge, buying and selling, trading, investing, sending and receiving. So they go above and beyond just cryptos um, and really get into kind of the whole cryptocurrency industry with other investments as well. So have a look at Collective Shift, buy and get some news. Here, what I was mapping the other day was um, Core. Core has what to me, a wonderful chart. Actually, Core looks like it's doing the same thing that ETH BTC is doing. Um, I think a lot of tokens in DeFi have this same pattern of we hit highs in October, and now we've had we're having our correction, and we're just in the middle of a correction. Um, and it looks like Core has yet to have that little pump that um, we've seen from other DeFi tokens this last week. Um, a lot of other tokens have had the spike in this last week or two, where we're actually waiting for Core. Um, C Vault to do that. And actually, let's see that. Excuse me. Let's see that on DeFi. That's global. I'm really pumped that the market cap of crypto is above 500 billion. That's that's a big deal. So this is core. Let's go and um, chart what we wanted to. Let's have a look at. So we'll have a look at BTC to ETH, BTC to USD. And I want to compare it to BTC to ETH. BTC to USD is just crushing it. Oh, I hope you go fast. Good. BTC to ETH. That's ETH. Uh, Squanchy loaded up on some core below 3.8. Well done. Hmm. I don't see the BTC to ETH pair. Bummer. There it is, let's go. That is so weird. All right, well, we'll go ETH the BTC. Don't know if this makes sense. Well, there's BTC to USD continues to pump. BTC to ETH continues to go down. I guess that is the divergence that we are looking for um, for an ETH investment. Um, yeah, ETH to BTC just continues to go down um, over, the, when is this? This is from October through to today. Um, BTC continues to go up compared to USD. ETH goes down compared to BTC. And let's see ETH to USD, which will probably have a similar pattern. Yep. So this is, I think, what they're talking about here. We've got ETH um, in pink, BTC to USD flying, obviously. You, um, Ethereum to USD in blue, doing well, but not as well as BTC. And then we have our ETH to BTC pair in red down the bottom, that as we can see, BTC is outperforming Ether. And that if the trend that follows of that Ether lags performance of Bitcoin, which has been a, a decently um, kind of observed, um, observed pattern of ETH lagging BTC, we could see that right here. We could see this gap 
And actually, we're looking for this gap to fill. We're looking at the BTC to USD price versus the ETH to USD price. We're looking for this gap to fill, and we're looking for ETH to catch up in performance to BTC. So not a big charter, um, but we kind of have to be if we're, in, if we're in the trade. And I think this is a pretty good little chart here of um, BTC, ETH, and USD. It's kind of telling that I think everyone is waiting for an Ethereum boost like our Ethereum pump. I want to see Ether at 550. Um, at least that's where I think it should be. So cool. That was a nice little chart. If anybody wants uh, to chart something else or if anyone's seen a chart that they're interested in, looks like TradingView loads pretty quickly and we can go in there um, and kind of add charts pretty quickly so we can start charting as well. Cool. Um, well, I did want to show my, my map again. Someone's asking, why isn't there more talk of San Diego as a future tech hub? Has the weather infrastructure, talent close by, and great quality of life? I'll tell you why. People in San Diego, I've lived there, are lazy. People in San Diego, the weather's too good. You're having too good a time. You don't need to work hard during the winter. Um, you can go outside and have a great time. So people like to have far too good a time in San Diego, and they love to drink. That's why, in my opinion, it hasn't become a tech hub, but I hope it will. We just need one or two good startups to go down to San Diego, and I think it's going to explode. Um, I did want to show my map. This is the world's greatest cryptocurrency map. You're about to view it. Hopefully, it, there it is. This is just one portion. I don't know how to zoom out because it's too large. Um, but here is the world's greatest cryptocurrency map. We've got Web3 development tools, all of these have links. We've got crypto resources, Web3 places that I need to add to, I'm listing at Polkadot and the Binance ecosystem as they're being built. Then, so this is a good section that we're going to build on top of. Um, next, next, I've made it look really good here. We're going our OSI model, we're going from layer, let me go down. From layer one applications, our currencies, our blockchains, our smart contract platforms, our next generation blockchain tech, and also something that I added yesterday was operating systems. And I wanted to talk to the community to sit today about operating systems. I've got Elastos in there, one of my. No one talks about Elastos. I love Elastos. They've got, in my term, they're playing the longest game. I always like to chat about who's playing the longest game. Um, you know, governments, they play 100 year games. You and I, we play daily, weekly, monthly, yearly games. Um, Elastos is playing a decade, a multi-decade game here in their building and operating system for crypto. Um, going on to Oracle, going on to layer two or middleware solutions, kind of a little harder to map, but we've got our Oracles, our interoperability tokens, our payments, privacy, scalability, added scale and lightning network last night. We've got our stablecoin protocols, which are a little tough to, 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 to categorize, and then infrastructure is empty, but I do see that filling up. Moving up to tools and services. Wallets, staking, both staking normally and ETH staking, DAOs, storage, supply chain, data, artificial intelligence, and energy. So a lot of our industries here where people are building, a lot of these could be applications as well. So they could be layer four, but I thought I'd stick them in layer three. Going up to layer four, this is where all the action is. This is where we see a lot of our B2C applications that you and I can actually connect our MetaMask to and actually have a tangible impact with. So these investments in layer four are easier for the retail investor to make than, in my opinion, the layer two or layer three solutions, which are a little harder to see. It's harder to see Chainlink's tangible value compared to, say, a Uniswap because I can connect my, Uniswap, my wallet to Uniswap. It's very tangible. So for our application layer, we have Dex. There's a lot of, I think, all of green, or most of green's DeFi. Dexes, lending and borrowing, yield farming, derivatives, DeFi indexes, rebasing currencies, asset management, prediction markets, crypto banking, which I don't have enough here for crypto banking, centralized exchanges, NFTs, gaming, and virtual reality. So this is the start of the world's greatest crypto map. Every little link or every little symbol has a link. We're just going to continue to add to this. And the not only OSI model, we'll be looking at other different ways to map as well. So I'm pumped. I'm pretty jazzed on it. Really jazzed on it, actually. Here we go. I, why do we? People often ask, why do, why do we talk about altcoins slash shitcoins? That's a great question. Oh, where'd it go? Um, 
Tegan Spartan's talking about ETH, ETH as a DeFi proxy. Yeah, it's a decent DeFi proxy. Here we go. We just saw Core have this same pattern. Uh, Vernon. Hey, Vernon. Hey, Vernon. Good to see you. I haven't seen you since um, New Orleans. Hopefully you like the map. Yes, Vernon, we do need BlockFi. Let me take a note of that. Great. So we'll add BlockFi there to crypto, uh, to crypto banking. As we can see here, the dot to Bitcoin has the same exact kind of pattern as our core uh, chart that we just saw two seconds ago. We have a shrinking um, of volatility down here into a wedge. So it looks like dot to Bitcoin is ready to explode as well. Um, I wanted to go back down to that tweet from oh you uh, Forrest, the the maps under the in the map channel and I think I need to update the invite link uh, so go into the map channel scroll up you'll see a lucid chart link follow Masari Masari crypto um, probably one of the leaders in terms of crypto research um, follow them I want to go back to that tweet about looking at alts and shit coins because. I always love people's takes on altcoins and shitcoins. I really like BTC or, or Bitcoin's uh, maxi takes on altcoins and shitcoins that they just won't even look under the hood to see what's being built there. How good's Queen's Gambit? I just watched the first episode yesterday. Oh, here we go. We got some news. SEC News has granted permission to the digital avatar firm. Ooh, a digital avatar firm, IMVU. Um, to sell its Ethereum-based Vcoin digital currency. IMVU is the world's largest avatar social platform. Interesting. Haven't heard of it. I'll probably have a look today. I recommend signing up for all alphas, all betas, all test nets that you can um, just to participate early on in communities. It seems like a lot of us, like Squanchy, you, we're already um, Echomeanda. We're already very early, and I do recommend participating. You can you learn very quickly once your assets are actually sitting in these protocols and you're tracking it and seeing what other community members. So um, when gas fees are low, maybe even make just a few little um, kind of investigative investments where, great, let me put in a few hundred bucks. Let me see what's going on if gas fees are low enough. I wanted to look at this Josh Rager Twitter thread. I love people's take on altcoins and shitcoins. We love them here. Um, it's more or less about finding value and profit returns on trades. Why I value Bitcoin's fundamentals. There are times when altcoins provide far more profitable returns. It's true. He's saying that altcoins do have value, especially in a bull market that lasts maybe for another year. BTC should be part of everyone's portfolio for sure. Yeah, not much there. He's just trying to appease everyone who doesn't like his shitcoin talking. Yeah. Um, I did mention it earlier this week that we're in a early industry. We're in crypto. We're in a, we're in a nascent industry, and we're also in a bull market. Or it seems to be like we're in a bull market. So don't buy on up days, please. Have patience. Buy on down days, whether those are one percent down days, five percent down days. Just don't buy. Don't buy Litecoin today when it's up ten percent. Wait for a few days, even if you get it on down day. Um, in the coming days. I just whenever you're in a bull market, don't buy on the up days. It's my, it's my. It's not easy to do because as humans, we have emotions. We FOMO into things, but just have the patience. What other news? So the big news stories this week was BTC above 18k. Um, let's have a look at XRT. And the other big news story was Uniswap this week had um, the end of its rewards. So a lot of liquidity. We saw that on Uniswap.info. A lot of liquidity left Uniswap because rewards um, also left. And I think right now they're actually having proposals to get rewards back for Uni holders. And actually, I know they are. There's this great website called Snapshot where everybody runs. Let's see if I can actually get it. Snapshot Uniswap. There it is. Hopefully, this is the, um, the snapshot. So they're, they're having a proposal to which pools do we actually continue to incentivize. Um, and this is where decentralized governance comes in. Um, the community is going to decide which pools are incentivized in the future. As minority holders of Uniswap, here it is. Should Uniswap distribute Uni to liquidity providers? This was, where's the date? November 16th, November 19th. So this snapshot vote 
um, is ending today at, I don't know which time zone that is, but it looks like, yes, um, we are going to be distributing additional uni rewards to wrap BTC to ETH, USDC to ETH, USDT to ETH, and DAI to ETH. So most likely, um, those were our largest pools in terms of volume. So they've decided to go and reward those people with the largest either liquidity or the largest volume. And they're going to be issuing another 20 million. So do note this website, snapshot.page. This is pretty much our UI or our UX for people to have simple voting proposals within their decentralized governance. If you and I, if we started a DAO for our community, we'd probably use Snapshot just to be like, hey, here's our unofficial poll. And actually, look, you can connect your wallet, awesome. Oh yeah, XRT. So here we are, Robonomics. That looks like we're locking up again. Robonomics Network XRT, let's have a look. Seventh, so about 5 million in market cap or about 7 million and fully diluted. Oof, I see a page not found up the top. Hey, Primo, got one live, welcome. If there's anything, Primo, that you want out today, let me know. Uh, we're, at, we're about 9.25, we're actually over our time limit, but might as well stay on and continue to chat as long as we have things to talk about. Um, at least, yeah, probably till 10-ish. So, Primo, let me know if you want to talk about anything today, any news stories. Ooh, XRT, um, here it is. This is one average looking website. Secure, cost-effective, and futuristic IoT platform for connecting robotics under Polkadot and Ethereum control. Awesome. You know what? I don't even need a good UI UX. If we're just going to have robots talking to each other, why do I need a UI UX? This, this could be interesting. Um, for these type of very technical plays, I want to see a very strong, well-pedigreed team um, with quite a bit of funding. So good call. We've got a very early, and this is another project within the Polkadot ecosystem that we should keep an eye on, Robonomics. I'm not the biggest shiller for my, for my likes, but do smash that like button and go smash that subscribe button. Join our Primo, join our Discord. We've got a nice little community brewing that's going to be very valuable, I think, in 2021. I think the value of our community, XRT is a parachain for DOT. Uh, Forrest, do you know if we've started selling parachains, uh, quote unquote selling? Are there actually active parachains or are they just like reserving spots? Um, I just want to keep, that's actually what we should map for our Polkadot ecosystem is what are the, the list of parachains that are live, the list of parachains that are kind of in queue or waiting. Hey, thank you, Squanchy, for, for being part of the community. Um, I do think our research community in Discord, um, we're just getting started. So I think that the value there is limited right now, but in 2021, 2022, if we keep the community together, I think it's going to be a lot of value. Um, there's going to be a lot of value there in that you and no, but there is a hierarchy forest in line, so to say, perfect. I'm going to make it a mission of mine, of ours, to get that list. We need to keep a list of the Polkadot parachain. If parachains don't work, Polkadot's going to fail. I think they will. Oh, thank you, Forrest. Let's dig that up. We'll put it on the um, the crypto map. A big reason to have the crypto map is now you and I, we have a shared document that we have a, 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 a like a similar vision of the world. I tried to create a Google Sheet. No one really likes Google Sheets. People love FTX. Hmm. What's this about DAOs? People talking ultras. Hmm. Don't know what ultras is actually. Actually, I think this is interesting. Someone did a little charting here. I think they put their wedge the wrong way around. Do not consider the forced total of Ave with Ave Ave protocol. Hmm. Out 
outwitted by builders like Stanny, but Stanny's the founder of Aave. I don't really know what that tweet means. Oh, did not consider the forced total of Aave. Hmm. So Primo, you're a big fan on liquid staking tokens like Staffy for our ETH plus DeFi plus staking rewards. Agreed. Yep, we um, we do know Staffy here uh, for, the, for the Polkadot ecosystem. Big fan of staking as well. Um, staking should be kind of automated. Hmm. Here's a great thread from my app from Shahil Bloom around First Principles 101. He actually does some good threads. That might be a decent read. Look, well, we were chatting about SNTVT earlier today, Centivate, and someone is saying, actually, this is an epic chart. Someone is saying um, for SNTVT, I think Echo Mienda, you and I were chatting about this. Centivate broke the last low, forming some bullish divergences. It needs to reclaim the last low, consolidate to be bullish. And let's have a look at this beautiful, beautiful chart. Uh, it doesn't show us all of it. Oh, there it is. SNTVT to BTC. Did have a nice little pump here recently. Hopefully I can get out of here decently quickly. Mm. Yep, so the total DeFi market cap continues to go up. We're about 17.8 billion at the moment. Um, we were flirting at around 14 billion for many, many weeks um, a few weeks ago. Here we go. Here's the highest volume of the last couple of days. Eh. It's funny, at a certain point, my Twitter just slows down heavily. So here's the high volume, all of our big names here. The only one we don't trust, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Tron. SNTVT is being used in pairs on Bancor V2. Interesting. That's good to know. So it's like an, an, an Ether equivalent. Yeah, people are loving SNTVT. Here's the top gainers. Um, anyone that we notice in terms of top gainers. 3x long sushi token performed really well, clearly. Zlot. Zlot's performing well. Zlot is related to Hedgic. Here's another one, Limit Swap from Bull Run Gravano. Bull Run has always got some very early, early coins. I'm a little hesitant on investing in any more swaps or any more, you know, exchange tokens now, except for probably on the Polkadot ecosystem. Hopefully this loads. Um, Limit Swap sounds like a swap website or an exchange website. So have a look at cash tag limit. It's not, it's not loading, unfortunately. We spent the last 15 years working for gig money, likes and retweets. Yeah, this is so true. Tech platforms give us reputation or cash, but no ownership, um, upside or voice in, the, in its evolution. There is this just common theme that the users of platforms are being taken advantage of and that decentralization is going to solve that. I'm not so sure. Um, I'm going through this right now. It's like, yeah, great. YouTube's not paying me yet and it's like great if we had a decentralized youtube would i actually make a living off of it and it's like super questionable really don't know if the economics are there i'm gonna actually have a look at this sorry thread in a bit i see my old employer there do you guys know yield aggregator token for the polka dot ecosystem like a yfi or a harvest do we know yield farming for the polka dot ecosystem yet that's a good question. Hmm. I guess Staffy. Staffy is probably our, our best staking um, play that I know of. And actually, let me open up my crypto map here really quickly. Here's what I've got. 
for Polkadot ecosystem. Um, so Staffy's down there. Probably Staffy's your best bet. I don't have anything, everything listed there. I don't know about yield farming on Polkadot yet. Pretty bullish on the on programmable equity by Fairmint Co. This is going to be great. Fairmint Co.'s potential to reshape who gets equity in a business and even what type of business can be built is so massive. I agree. Have a look at Fairmint Co. Hopefully this loads. There it is. Fairmint provides founders with the most effective solution to turn stakeholders into investors. Get in touch with us to enter the ownership economy. Wonderful. This is what my old business, my old fintech company called Carta was trying to do. Fairmintco.com. Let's turn all of our employees, all of our users into owners. Um, we are turning into the ownership economy, which they just kind of mentioned. We are going to a place where we should be, you know, you have value inherently for, for kind of existing. Now we're getting into like UBI topics, but essentially you should be compensated in some way uh, for, for participating and being part of the ecosystem. It's just, I don't know how that's going to shake out from an economic standpoint. All right, 935. Any other stories today? If you're in your 20s and have no responsibilities, buy Bitcoin, learn about digital assets, do it. MTA, is MTA on some, some big stuff today? Where's our DeFi tokens? Let's go check MTA. I love MTA. Their website's slick. Seems like they got a good team. Where is Meta? There it is. Yeah, Meta's on something. Um, they're up at 12% here. It's about halfway down, 12% in the last hour. Four, yeah, pretty much just the last hour. We've, we've had a pump for Meta today while we've been on the call, MTA. Yeah, did we really? Wait, which one? Uh, Octo, Octo keeps shooting up. Actually, an OctoFi should be on the same page, Octo. Not there. So really, we all just should have bought Octo in the last hour. Yep, save three. Um, I think save three is related to our insurance play. Oh, oops. Uh, Coin Gecko. See, this little guy is probably the talk of the town on Twitter yesterday. Um, I think Pomp pumped up this uh, this little investor called Young Investor or Investor underscore two. I think he's like 12 out of the UK um, and he's a little investor. So everyone's like pumping him up now. now. Bitcoin, imagine playing Monopoly, but Bitcoin cuts the banker out of the equation. Damn, what a smart kid. Echo Meander, thanks, thanks for extending this live stream. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good day, Echo Meander. But yeah, have a look at Young Vester too. He's he's gonna have a lot of followers, that little guy. Oh yeah, Octo Fi, here we go. We're up 25% in the last and what we're up 10% in the last hour. So all right. We've got another game changer here. What is this? I don't know if this will load. This could take a while. Um, Bybit. Eh, I'm out on Bybit. Seems like we pretty much covered the news story today. Bitcoin's back above 18,000. So we're, we're still in rarefied atmosphere for Bitcoin. Yeah, Echo Mando, I did see that this morning, that uh, Matic is using Chainlink now. Um, very bullish on Matic network. I might have to get a little bag.
this is it's, a, it's an interesting little thread here from um, Vitalik uh, Buterin, kind of the founder of Ethereum. Realistically, for the next two years, Ethereum will be an ecosystem under rapid transformation. When someone was asking about the max supply of ETH, it's a decent question. The max supply of ETH, um, and there isn't really an answer for max supply. I am I'm very curious if that's going to hurt the Ethereum community going forward. All right, I think we've kind of covered all of our big news today. Anything else, I'm gonna hop off here in a second, I'll, but if anyone wants to talk about um, any other topics today, let me know, throw it in the, in, in, the, in the comments and we'll have a quick look at any organization or token. Come on Twitter. Um, I did wanna keep checking some of the other stats. Our biggest losers are today. Don't know any of these tokens, thank God. Uh, other RARI governance tokens down. Here's our tree map. Pretty green, so pretty green day for, for, for crypto in general. Here's our coin dominance. Ooh, that BTC dominance went down over the last couple of days. Let's go to the 30-day chart. You can, it doesn't look like a big drop, but I think this is, this is, this is telling. Uh, we, yeah, we had a, a drop from 67% and eh, not that big a drop down to 62%. Yeah, that's actually, that's a meaningful drop. So our market cap dominance for Bitcoin went down to 62%. And actually, most people probably know the coin dominance um, goes down during BTC funds when alts pump, or at least it did last time. And there it is right around December. To, or January, November 17 to January 18. Oh, that's when our, our BTC dominance uh, was just smashed. And it hit all the way down to about 34%. So you can see, I don't think the BTC dominance will ever be um, as high as it was. I don't know if it'll ever go above 80% again. Uh, I think we have a lot of value created within cryptocurrency, uh, e within the ecosystem in, in general, that I don't think BTC will ever be 80% of the market cap ever again. So continue to watch this BTC market cap go down and down and down, in my opinion which theoretically makes sense. Max Kaiser, are we seeing the education of a new Bitcoiner with Ray Dalio? Stop talking about Ray Dalio. I'm so over Ray. His opinion about crypto doesn't matter. Why don't people understand that? Yes, he was one of the world's best investors. And now we've got a brand new economic system where I don't think he can compete. And if he can, let's see it. But people want validation from Warren Buffett about crypto, from Ray Dalio about crypto. I, if you're over 60 years old, I'm sorry. I don't care about your opinion on crypto. I just don't. And I probably should open up that, 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 um, that opinion because obviously people that are older than 60% hold the majority of the wealth on planet earth so i should probably open up my opinion that their opinion on bitcoin does matter um for the short term but their long-term opinion on bitcoin i don't think matters too much bitcoin auction investors are starting to hedge against a potential price pullback i could see that that's why I don't buy bitcoin today please um we've had a nice run here of about 14 percent in the last couple of days actually i shouldn't i shouldn't i shouldn't say that you buy bitcoin whenever you want TVL keeps shooting up and they have got integration with CFI coming up. Awesome. Yeah, I'm very curious about Cosmos and Kava. I don't know Kava that well, but we do have it on our map. Um, let's see if I've actually got the website listed. Kind of open it ready. I don't, I'm not that bullish on them, Primo. Um, but it could be one of these organizations that we're, we're, we're just building, we're putting in the pipelines now and we're, we're ready to explode. Let's see if I can find Cobb. I just want to see that chart really quickly. We don't have a market, a fully diluted market cap. 
We've got about 2 million in total rewards distributed already. That seems very high. About $1.78, but about half the token circulating. So about 160 million fully diluted market cap. We're down 68% from all time highs. I'm curious how long this token's been around. And that's a that's why we've had so many uh, rewards distributed. Is the token has been in terms of crypto timelines been around for a decent amount of time since October two thousand nineteen. Jeez, this this chart's pretty bullish. We've got an all time high above five dollars, so we could take our one seventy eight, turn it into five if it goes back to all time highs. I do love people building with Binance. I think Binance is, is not going anywhere. We're audited, we're backed by industry giants. Cool. Big fan of Kava. Don't, haven't used it yet. And actually let's click on the app. I do, do love to connect to these. Cool, Trust Wallet, Ledger. I wish they would get um, MetaMask, but they probably will. Cool, we can BNB, we can lock our BNB, lock our USDX. Interesting. Don't know if it's a long-term play. Um, but TVL keeps shooting up. I'm not a big fan of the BNB locked. I'd rather go to Ethereum-based websites, but I think there is room for multiple blockchains to exist. Excited to see pitches from some, from, from some fabulous female teams at Meta Game Meta Gamma Delta. Oh, cool! MGT is an ex inclusive and empowering society supporting women-led products. Awesome! Go and follow Meta Gamma Delta if you want to invest in any female or women-led projects. Big fan of female leadership and female executives, simply for diversity of opinion. Ooh, we got a partnership with Epic Games. DM script. Let's have a look at DMST. Gosh, the amount of coins out there. DM script gaming up up a thousand percent from all time lows. Um, about sixty million, sixty million in fully diluted market cap. Two million in circulating market cap. You said it before, Kyle, I'll say it again. The best exchange for trading crypto market is FTX. I could see that. Um, I haven't used FTX yet, but if they have very minimal fees and they connect with my wallets, I could totally see why. Here is DM script. Blockchain in times of crisis. Cool. Um, so they're game developers. It's a tough business model. Game develop. Um, number one, you need to have a. You need one of your first couple of games has to be a hit, um, or else you kind of just run out of funds. And game development doesn't. It takes time. Here we go. Higlo. Higlo.gg. M scripts main project at the moment. A peer to peer betting platform. Ooh, love me some peer to peer betting. What makes Higlo special is that it's one of the very few P2P betting platforms that are based on blockchain tech. Okay, great. Yeah, blockchain. It's funny. People keep using the term peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, when DeFi is proving to us that it's really pool-to-pool -pool investing in that you and I are not making our money off of you and me lending within this like little community. 
It's you and I pooling our assets into a liquidity pool, that liquidity pool talking to other liquidity pools. So it's really pool to pool lending, in my opinion, I'm getting into the technicalities, but it's good to note. We've also got an online store called Urbizy. Actually, cool name, Urbizy. Oh no, sorry, Oob Rizzy. Not as good. They allow users to buy video games, products, and items from companies like Steam, Origin, Riot Games, PlayStation, using cryptocurrencies. This is really cool. So this is going to be a competitor with UOS. I think we should add this to the map. Uh, Ecomanda, good tip, buddy. Um, really good tip. And Primo, oh, here we go. Here's Higlo. Unleash your esports anal analysis. Make new friends. Share on your favorite teams. Cool. I just don't know if I just don't know if gaming betting is going to be that big a thing. Cool. So that's a very early investment. So what is all the hype around Hedgic? Is it just Andre hype? Is it something solid going on? Well, the storyline goes that YFI is a yield farming aggregator for us that needs profit generating strategies for them to get the best yield um, and pretty much outcompete all the other yield farmers. Well, before Hedgit came around, there were no strategies around actually investing in options or crypto options. So yes, this is a lot of Andre hype, um, but it is also, it seems to play into the timeline of, okay, we need new and novel profit generating strategies so that our yield farms can continue to produce high APYs. Let us diversify out of just yield farming and staking into other economic instruments, complex economic instruments like options. So to me, it's this is just another way for them to diversify their profit generating strategies into more complex financial instruments. Um, so it kind of makes sense to me. Do I think a lot of it's maybe based on Andre? Probably. Everyone's talking about is ETH uncorrelated or correlated to DeFi today? I guess that's the biggest talking point of today um, is that for the last hour and a bit, we've just continually seen people talk about is ETH a proxy for DeFi? Now people are charting ETH is blue right here versus DeFi perp or the DeFi perpetual is here. So seems like a decent correlation. Here's DC Investor. I am DC Investor's um, very active. I think he's full time in this. And his take is his point of view is ETH will be used as a proxy for exposure to DeFi and everything else built on Ethereum later this cycle, probably. Obviously, ETH is a decent proxy for DeFi, but Ethereum's larger than just DeFi. We have NFTs, we have virtual reality. So ETH at the moment should be a decent proxy for um, DeFi because DeFi is the majority of Ether's um, or Ethereum's. Prop value proposition. I think the longer Ethereum exists, the less of a proxy it will be for DeFi. Wow, Bancor's TVL is up 43% in the last 24 hours alone. Interesting. Let's actually have a look at DeFi Llama. No, everyone likes DeFi Pulse. I'm going to try to use DeFi Llama for a little bit and see if the information is just as good. So DeFi Pulse says Bancor's TVL is up a lot. Um, now they've got single-sided AMM exposure. They've got permanent. Actually, here we go. They've got impermanent loss protection. Impermanent loss hopefully is no longer a thing in the future. Here we are. We're about almost 16 billion in total value locked on DeFi Llama. And now where is our bank core? <laughs> Come on, DeFi Llama. Don't not have bank core for me, bummer. Back to limit swap again. We've come full circle here. I just want to see what this limit swap actually is. Show me. 
Um, who else? Total value locked has also gone up. Um, we continue to see growth in TVL. It looks like our growth is Aave, Synthetics, Balancer, Wiron over the last couple of days, as well as Wrap BTC. And here you can see on the right hand side, negative 50% decrease for the seven day total liquidity or total value locked on Uniswap. Harvest Finance liquidity is down, Barn Bidge, Cream, and Pickle their liquidity is down as well. And I don't think they've performed as well as other DeFi projects this week. Oh, you're welcome, Primo. Thank you for being part of the community. Please join the Discord. Um, I think we're, we're all better investors as a community rather than not. And I think this will pay dividends in 2021 once our community gets a little larger. Oh, we've also got some news here. So Cover, the Cover protocol, their token release might be today we like um chef coverage <laughs> alan for the protocol for the cover protocol has given his twitter handle as chef coverage probably a play on words on chef sushi or chef nami so that's clever so this is great covers coming out today so cover protocol um that's probably big news we should probably take a peer-to-peer -peer coverage awesome market we should probably have a look at that tomorrow here we go sec chairman jay clayton calls bitcoin store of value Woo we are getting there we are we are slowly changing the opinions of the masses well done to everyone out there i know it's your doing as well Hmm. Munger and Buffett on discounted cash flows. Earlier in the talk, earlier in the call, we were talking about cash flows. What is going to be the equivalent of cash flows in the crypto world? Um, for now, they're most. Hey, Shayo. Good morning. Most likely, in my opinion, our cash flows is just going to be our crypto flows then converted. Um, here's Charlie Munger at the 1996 Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting. It's funny, Warren talks about these discounted cash flows. I've never seen him do one. And then Buffett says, it's true. If the value of a company doesn't just scream out at you, it's too close. It's an interesting take from a very good investor. And we can see a lot of this in crypto. I'm sure you've seen that we have a lot of value that is just screaming at us in crypto, kind of like core. We just saw the core liquidity pair earlier today. Um, Honestly, we we charted ETH versus BTC earlier in the in the call. This is kind of screaming out at us today. So I thought that's actually a pretty interesting little insight into Munger and, and Buffett around DCFs. Oh, cool. Uh, integrate Uniswaps now on Crypto Watch. I love Crypto Watch. Head over to Crypto under, or Crypto WAT underscore CH. They've got a really, really solid website. Actually, I, I saw Saffron Finance. Um, I continue to see Saffron Finance, excuse me. We'll have a follow of Saffron Finance. You were at that meeting? That's so funny, Forrest. Talk about full circle. There's Jill Carlson ripping into people who don't own Bitcoin. Cool. Ooh, media is all over crypto. This is great. We're really starting to get into it. Actually, let's see how stocks, we, we, we should keep our polls on traditional finance. Um, I just use Yahoo because it sees public info. Let's see how stocks are doing today. Let's see if they talk about Bitcoin. Someone's saying dot, bullish on dot. Hmm. 
oh yeah, Haven protocol. I wanted to have a look at the Haven protocol, but maybe not today. Really quickly, we'll check Yahoo Finance um, for kind of our last, last stories of today. But pretty solid day. DeFi is performing well. Um, Bitcoin continues to hold 18, which is really great. Let's just hold, hold 18. Want it to jump up to 20K too quickly. All right, stocks are slightly down. That's fine. Are there any any mentions of Bitcoin or crypto on the front page? Nope. So we're out. All right. It's about 10 o'clock. This has been a great uh, live stream this morning. Thanks to everyone that joined. Um, Shadyo, you made some nice gains this morning from last night. Trust swap. Oh, well done. Let's see if trust swap is on. There it is. Trust swap. 243. Well done, Shayo. Good job. Are you taking profits today or are you just going to hodl? That is a question that I need to start asking people in the Discord is, what do you do with your yield farm gains? If you do yield farm a token like a pickle or a farm or any other sort of yield farming token, is what are people's strategies? You have options. You can sell for cash, sell for BTC, sell for ETH. You can hold all the yield farmed asset. Um, I'm always curious about people's strategies. Shalya, you took your took my buy-in out back to ETH. Well done. That's my biggest strategy is convert it all to BTC and ETH. Cool, trust swap. Well done. We're up 26%. Oh, we've been out for a while actually, this token. I see our alt is in June of 19, so it's, for, it's been out for at least six or five months now, but probably longer. Ooh, good chart too. Really good chart. We kind of launched it, launched right in the middle of DeFi. We had our DeFi summer, summer of DeFi pump here. Really concerned that if you're a coin that launched during the summer of DeFi and you don't have the summer of DeFi pump, probably means you weren't that, um, weren't that kind of innovative or exciting for people. So, thankfully, TrustSwap did have the summer of DeFi pump, and now we're just having um, kind of a reasonable decrease back to. 33 cents, probably a pretty good time to get in, even though it's up 26% today. Only about 35 million in value. Um, I'd have to look to see what the long-term value prop is outside of just being a swap website. I assume it's a swap website. DPI now has 30 million TVL, that's great. Honestly, this is so cool. Uh, Zillow surfing is the escape we all need right now. I'm going to a lifestyle of pretty much just going to be moving all around the world. Just go and stay in Zillow's for a couple of weeks each different time. Well, I'm sorry, Trust Swap's not loading as fast as I'd like. Pickle is awesome, you say, Forrest. I put 5K into Pickle and it pays my wife's car notes. Beautiful. Lovely. See, that's when you're, you, you, it sounds like you, you found a reasonable amount of money, you know, 5K. It's not a small amount. It's not a large amount. Um, but it's with good returns, um, good yield farming returns, you know, 5K can turn into a decent weekly, monthly, um, little bit of passive income. Damn. Really ripping into Zuck. Zuck does continue to look less human. I think he gets a hard. I think he gets um, a hard gig. The guy starts a social media company, and now the whole world wants wants Zuckerberg to be our like social police. And the guy's like, I just created a social media platform. Hmm. Personal tokens an hour, actually right now. Interesting. XDI uh, kickback events. Might have a look at that. It's probably a pretty good time to end today. Um, thank you for everyone for joining. Really, had a, it's a good Thursday. Uh, we had a lot to cover. The, the crypto map looked really good. I'm going to figure out how to share that crypto map outside of our community. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Really appreciate it. Happy Thursday, November 19th. We'll see you tomorrow as well. Um, happy crypto investing. Hold on.
See you, team.